The virus SARS coronavirus 2, or SARS CoV 2, is the known cause of coronavirus disease 2019, or COVID 19. In this image from the Centers for Disease Control, or CDC, we can see the spike, or S protein, colored in red, covering the viral membrane. S protein facilitates viral entry into the host cells when its receptor binding domain, or RBD, interacts with human angiotensin converting enzyme 2, or HACE2. Because of its central role in viral entry, S protein is a main target for vaccine and antiviral drug development. A group of researchers from Seoul National University in South Korea, University of Cambridge in the United Kingdom, and Lehigh University in the United States of America have worked together to produce all atom models of full length S protein. This includes performing simulations on Nurion at the Korea Institute of Science and Technology Information. The S protein structure was determined by cryo EM with the RBD up in PDB ID 6VSB and with the RBD down in PDB ID 6VXX but this model has many missing residues. So we first modeled the missing amino acid residues, and then other missing domains. In addition, we modeled all potential glycans, or carbohydrates, attached to the S protein. These glycans prevent antibody recognition, which makes it difficult to develop a vaccine. We also built a viral membrane system of S protein for molecular dynamics simulation. This video demo illustrates how to build this membrane system from our SARS-CoV-2 S protein models. You can find these models from the homepage of CharmGUI by clicking on the COVID-19 archive link or by clicking the archive link in the header, then the COVID-19 proteins link in the left sidebar. The full S protein structure includes a fusion peptide, FP, heptad repeat 1 and 2, HR1 and HR2, transmembrane, TM, and cytoplasmic, CP, domain. The HR2 linker, HR2 TM, and CP domains each have two models, which means there are a total of eight full S protein models for each of 6VSB and 6VXX. In contrast, the original PDB structure is indicated by this yellow section. All of these S protein models and simulation systems are available in this archive. The model name follows the model numbers used for the HR linker, HR2TM, and CP structures. For example, 6VSB111 represents a model based on PDB6VSB with HR linker model 1, HR2TM model 1, and CP model 1. Each PDB file contains all glycan models and their connect information for reuse in CharmGUI. Note that all disulfide bond information is also included in each PDB file. This allows both glycans and disulfide bonds to be automatically recognized when the PDB file is uploaded to CharmGUI PDB Reader. For simulation, we provide pre-built simulation systems with input files for Charm, Namdi, Gromax, Genesis, Amber, and OpenMM. For a quick summary of system size and composition of a particular model, you can hover over Sysinfo. If you want to simulate any of these models, all you have to do is download and transfer them to your computing cluster. We strongly recommend that you read this paper before using any of these models. If you need to modify any of these files or use different lipid types, you can instead download the PDB file closest to the model you want to simulate. In this demo, we'll use Membrane Builder in CharmGUI and the 6VSB111 model to build a viral membrane system of a fully glycosylated, full-length S protein with palmitylation at cysteine residues 1236 and 1241 for CP model 1. If you instead want to use CP model 2, then you can palmitylate cysteine 1236 and cysteine 1240, as these residues are solvent exposed. The table in the video description shows approximate time for each step during the building process. Step 1 is to read and manipulate a biomolecule from a PDB file. Since our S protein model PDB files contain all glycan models and their connect information, PDB Reader and Manipulator recognizes all the model's glycans and their linkages. You can change the starting and ending residue number to model only certain soluble domains for only certain chains. For example, if you want to exclude the protein sections not included in the original PDB structure, you can change the ending residue to 1146. In the PDB manipulation step, you can use different glycoforms at any glycosylation site by clicking the Edit button for that site. Similarly, to add another glycosylation site, click the Add Glycosylation button. For detailed information about modifying glycan sites, 
watch the video demos for Glycan Reader and Modeler. The full S-protein model also includes palmitylation at certain cysteine residues. To reproduce this, choose CYSP, a palmitylated CYS residue in the charm force field, under Add Lipid Tail in this step. In this video demo, we'll palmitylate cysteine 1236 and 1241. Because S-protein is a transmembrane protein, and we want the palmitoyl group to be in the membrane hydrophobic core, the is this a membrane protein option needs to be turned on. Since the CYSP residue does not exist in the amber force fields, the palmitylation option should not be used if you intend to do amber simulation with the amber force fields. Note that palmitylation required an additional 2.5 hours due to the system size. Make sure to save the job ID so that you can check your job progress using Job Retriever. Step 2 is to orient the TM domain in a bilayer. The bilayer is defined to have its normal along the z-axis and its center at z equals 0. The TM domain of each S-protein model is already pre-oriented by aligning the TM domain's principal axis along the z-axis and its center at z equals 0, and by positioning the S1 domain at z greater than 0. Therefore, you should not change the orientation unless you have a specific reason to do so. If you do want to reorient the protein, you can translate it along the z-axis by clicking the Translate checkbox and entering the number of angstroms. When the orientation step finishes, always visualize step 2 orient.pdb to make sure that the protein is properly positioned in a bilayer. To build any complex homogeneous or heterogeneous bilayer system, Membrane Builder uses the replacement method, which first packs lipid-like pseudoatoms in step 3, and then replaces them with lipid molecules one at a time by randomly selecting a lipid molecule from a lipid structural library in step 4. In this study, the system size along the x and y axes was set to 250 angstroms to have enough space between the S1 and S2 domains in the primary system and its image system. The system size along the z axis was determined by adding 22.5 angstroms to the top and bottom of the protein size, yielding an initial system size of roughly 250 by 250 by 380 cubic angstroms. Although viral membranes are asymmetric, with different ratios of lipid types in the inner and outer leaflets, in this study the same mixed lipid ratio was used in both leaflets to represent a liquid-ordered viral membrane. This ratio is 4 DPPC to 6 POPC to 12 DPPE to 18 POPE to 4 DPPS to 6 POPS, to 20 PSM, to 30 cholesterol. When the packing step finishes, make sure to visualize step3packing.pdb to make sure that the protein is nicely packed by the lipid-like pseudoatoms and that the system size along XY is reasonable. For a large liquid-ordered system with high cholesterol, like this S-protein, the replacement in step 4 takes an extremely long time because each lipid must be checked to avoid unphysical structures, such as acyl chain penetration into sterile ring structures, aromatic residues, and carbohydrates. This is also the reason that water box generation and ion placement are done separately in step 4. Step 5 is system assembly and input generation. Water molecules that collide with S-protein, glycans, and lipids are removed during system assembly. While we choose Gromax with the charm force field for this study, you can choose other simulation programs, or use the amber force fields for amber simulation. Note that input generation takes a long time to prepare all restraints for protein positions, chiral centers, acyl chain cis-double bonds, 
and sugar chair conformations that are used for the optimized equilibration input to prevent any unwanted structural changes in lipids and embedded proteins so that the protein simulations can probe physically realistic molecular behavior.